to go in our system. That being said, we'll go ahead and begin. Um, as I said, CC100 Canvas Connect. Today, uh, we'll learn about some things. We'll do Canvas, your online classroom, CC100 Canvas Connect practice course and new student orientation, how to log into Canvas, Canvas classroom navigation, how to complete assignments in CC100, and your next steps. So the first thing to learn is what is Canvas? Canvas is Brookline College's online classroom platform. It's an extremely popular online classroom. You may or may not have used it if you've ever attended college before. Students can use Canvas to attend live course meetings, communicate with instructors, access ebooks and material, complete coursework, and view grades. What is CC100 Canvas Connect? Canvas Connect is a practice course where students can practice logging into the online classroom platform, Canvas, navigating the platform and completing three practice assignments, a discussion board, a document upload, and a quiz. Students from all campuses attend the Canvas Connect workshop and complete the Canvas Connect course. So what is new student orientation? New student orientation is a live webinar session where students are in, introduced to important campus contexts and the services available at your campus. You'll learn how to get help and more. Both sessions are really important to your success as you're starting here at Brookline. So please be sure to attend both um, if you've been invited to a new student orientation that will take place in the next few days here. All right, so now we're going to get into the really important bits, so everybody buckle up. If you've already logged in to the system and you're ready to go, then you are very, very ahead of the game. Um, this will just be an overview of that process. We also sent out welcome emails earlier uh, on December 28th uh, to people's personal emails that walks them through this exact process. So uh, multiple ways here to get this information. Um, but this is a very important process, so if you have not done this yet, I would encourage you to take notes or follow along. So the three-step process to logging in is first, activate your student email and Microsoft Office 365 account, log in to the student portal at my.brooklinecollege.edu, and to log into Canvas from the student portal. These must be done in order in order to access Canvas online classroom. Let's start. So the very first step is activating your student email. All students receive a free Microsoft Office 365 and student email account for school. Your student email account is required to log into the student portal in Canvas. Instructions to access your account, including login credentials and your school email address will be emailed to your personal email account. If you guys have questions at any time, please feel free to pop them into the chat. Uh, we have quite a few people here, so we're not going to do uh, unmuting uh, at this time. But uh, again, if you have any questions, please pop them into the chat. And Kelly Harris, another student services advisor, will be happy to assist. To activate your student email account, you're going to go to office.com, click sign in, enter your student email address in the username field, enter the temporary password provided in your email, and create a new password um, when prompted. Verify your personal um, email account and or telephone number for future logins to the system. When you go to office.com and click sign in, it'll be one of those two buttons. It'll look like this, that guy. Um, enter your school email address. It'll look something like this. Um, it'll likely be your first initial, your last name, three random numbers at my.brooklyncollege.edu. You will enter the password given to you and you will update the password. Um, please make your password something that you can remember and write it down if you have trouble remembering passwords typically. Um, it is possible for us to reset your password, but not you. So um, definitely be cognizant of your password. Next, click verify to verify your cell phone and personal email address. Select your college, uh, your Brookline College account and verify your cell phone number. So you will go ahead and put in your cell phone number and click text me or call me. Um, please use your, your phone that you have access to every day all the time. Um, don't use uh, you know your mom's phone, your husband's phone, your neighbor's phone. Use your phone please um, because you're going to need this all the time to be able to log in. So important that you have access to it. It'll look like this. You'll get a little six digit code. You'll pop that in and click verify. Also guys, uh, please don't worry about memorizing this information. Again, this is all sent out in a PDF format um, with your welcome email. Um, so if you ever get lost or confused, um, you can definitely be refreshed on this. 
Then you will verify your email account. Again, you're going to want to use an email account that you have consistent access to. Um, this is not something that's ever going to send you spam, so don't worry about using your primary personal account. So verify your email address in the exact same way, utilizing um, the code. Pop it in there, click verify, and then you will have your whole account verified. Again, that is verifying via text messages and Gmail, or emails. So use the accounts that you, you have access to. Opt to stay signed in. So if you're using a computer that's solely yours or it's only used by people that you really trust, then you can go ahead and use this function. If you're using a computer that's public or it's shared by people that you may not trust around your school stuff, don't use this option. Once logged in, all Office applications will appear on the menu on the left. So to access your student email account, click on the Outlook icon from the app list below. So the Outlook icon, if you're not familiar, is it's a little blue envelope that has an O. You're going to click on it, and you will be inside of your student email. That's kind of important, so I'll go through it again. When you first log into office.com, you will be able to click on Outlook, and you will see your student email account. So you're definitely going to want to use your student email account as much as possible. Check it at least once a week because it is how the school communicates with you. Uh, so emailing people, professors, peers, things like that, any emails that you receive from the school as a whole will be inside of your Outlook account. Accessing your student account from your phone, you can do that just by downloading Microsoft Outlook and then going through all of the steps to log in again, um, except that you'll use the password you have set. Um, if you do not have the Microsoft Office suite of programs on your computer, you can download them by just clicking Install Office and following all the prompts. Uh, you can also use the virtual apps from the online menu. Um, they're not full versions of the program, so I would recommend you download and install the software, but this, the online versions do allow you to use them on the go. Once your account is activated, go to student portal at my.brooklinecollege.edu, click log in, and click on student portal homepage. So again, we're doing these steps in order. First step has to be to log into office.com. If you skip that step, you will not be able to do this next step. So now we're going to the student portal. Then this is how we log into Canvas. So inside of your student portal, you'll see all kinds of things, uh, but none of them are your classroom. So you're going to go to external links, access to online Canvas courses, and click on Brookline Canvas LMS. Sometimes, a lot of the time, you will have a pop-up blocker. So if you click on the link, Brookline Canvas LMS, and literally nothing happens, you probably have a pop-up blocker. So go ahead and disable that using uh, one of these steps, depending on what type of browser you're using. Um, I always recommend using Google Chrome or Firefox over Safari, but that's just me. Um, go ahead and disable a pop-up blocker. Click Agree to the Acceptable Use Policy and click Submit. So that's basically you're just agreeing to um, all of the rules and regulations of Canvas. The Canvas dashboard. All right, when you first get logged in, you will see something that looks a lot like this. Um, you will see a CC100 class and your other class that you will have starting here fairly soon. If it doesn't appear yet, don't panic. Sometimes they don't appear until literally the day before class starts to prevent you from, from doing anything in there um, because anything done before class start does not count. So uh, if you do have your class having appeared in, in your dashboard on Canvas, uh, please do not go into it and begin doing assignments. Um, again, please do not begin assignments in your actual course yet. All right. Key Canvas navigation items, dashboard and dashboard menu, course and course menu, and modules. So let's do a live demo. So I am going to go ahead and open up a new while you're doing that, Skylar, I did send all of you your emails and passwords that have asked so far. If you didn't receive those, just message me or um, they're in the chat. And if there's anybody else, let me know. Thank you so much, Kelly. Mm -hmm. And again, feel free to let us know if you did not receive that or your welcome email. Uh, so far, it seems like everyone's good. So really great that we're all in such good shape. OK, so now we're going to do a brief overview of Canvas um, and then some really key information regarding um, things that you'll need to know. OK, so the first things first when you get into here, this will always be the screen that loads first whenever you go to Canvas. Um, you will begin um, on your dashboard. So this has all of your active courses. And you can go into a course simply by clicking on any one of these. 
Another way to get to your courses is to use this universal navigation menu and to click courses. And then it just has them listed out instead of on a little square. The other thing that you have access to is a calendar. This lists um, all kinds of assignments. So you can see that the course I run, it has the assignments listed here. Yours will look something like this where it'll have your course assignments listed on their due dates. Um, I would highly recommend making use of this feature as the uh, calendar is a great way to help yourself stay organized and stay ahead of things. Finally, the inbox is the in Canvas navigation or um, excuse me, in Canvas messaging system. You can write a message to any teacher or peer in any one of your classes um, and they will receive it in Canvas. And if you get any messages from peers or teachers, then they will be in here. Let's go back to the dashboard, which is available at any point and go into a class. So the class that you are all enrolled in is CC100, which stands for Canvas Connect. And um, it's very, very important to note here that Canvas Connect is not an actual course that you are responsible for completing. Canvas Connect is for practice. So if you are brand new to Canvas and you're intimidated by navigating the system, that's really the purpose of the course, as well as an easy place to access some um, resources and benefits, which we'll go through in a minute. Again, I can't emphasize that enough. This is not something that you are expected to complete. Um, you know, no one's going to come after you if you haven't done an assignment from CC100. This is just for your practice and wholly for your benefit. But let's go ahead and use it as an example. So when you have your actual course that will begin next Monday, you will click on the same button that will be in your class. It will say start here on your first day. You will click on that button and it will take you to the start here module. All of the things um, on here on the left hand side. Um, these will be found inside of your regular courses um, and they do different things which we'll go over here in just a second. So you will do all of this um, prior to beginning your actual course material. So I want to show you guys that again. When you get into your actual course it's very important that you're able to click start here and you go through this stuff. So you're going to want to take a look to review your student resources and benefits and again we'll go through those momentarily. Review your course outcomes, review assignments and note due dates, use the mark as done feature to track your progress, get comfortable with course navigation and work through the rest of the start here module. So this is all something that you'll go through on your own during your first class. Uh, Canvas orientation, we're doing this now, but if you guys ever get confused, um, here are lots of really good videos that will show you how to work Canvas. Um, if it's confusing to you or you have questions, um, set up your Canvas account. Um, you have uh, your account op ob obviously is automatically existing, but if you want to customize it, this will show you how to do it. And set your notification preferences. That is actually something worthwhile. Um, a lot of times Canvas is set where it'll send you an email in addition to every little thing. Um, uh, Kama, I see your issue. Uh, Kelly, with that, that is going to be something that she is going to need to email tech support about. Okay, I'll give her the information. Thank you so much. It's the infinite okay. logout loop. If that's happening to anyone else, please let us know. It sometimes occurs, um, and it's something that will have to be escalated up um, just there. Thank you so much for that. Okay, so yeah, set, set your notification preferences, or else you might get emails for every little thing. It's up to you what you want emails on. I basically, when I was in school, we used Canvas. I had it on for grades. That's about it. Um, and uh, course announcements, which is a uh, two good things. So then um, once you're done with that, you will read through your course syllabus. If this is your first time in college, a syllabus is essentially like uh, your Bible for your course. It's going to tell you everything you need to know. Um, it'll be rules and regulations, policies, course outcomes, and a lot of times even due dates for assignments and week to week procedures. You will go ahead and take um, a Canvas quiz. It'll look like this. It'll take quiz. You will agree that you have read your syllabus and you'll submit the quiz. Very, very easy. So very, very simple. Um, you will just simply read through your course syllabus and then agree that you have read through your course syllabus. It doesn't get much easier than that, folks. Um, this forum is a place where you can ask and answer course related questions. So if you did have questions um, on um, anything uh, immediately or throughout the course, this is a great place to do so. Again, uh, just in case um, you got lost anywhere, this is inside of CC100. However, this exact same thing 
will be inside of all of your actual courses and it will be something that you'll have to go through. So that's why we're doing it together now, just so there are no surprises come the actual first day of class. Okie dokie. Again, instructions. This is a place for you to get to know your fellow classmates as um, some of your courses will be virtual. And this is something you actually do have to take place in. So inside of your actual course, again, you'll have instructions to introduce yourself. So um, you'll click reply and you will do one of these questions um, or things um, you'll select and you'll write up uh, what made you enter the program, your chronology of your life, an item for your house, your favorite book or movie. You will type up your reply. I can type your reply. And then you will post the reply. And then other people will be able to see what you said and you'll be able to see what they said. So again, that is required. Something that you do need to do in order to move into your actual course material is introduce yourself. Um, all right, plagiarism, another super important thing while we're here. Um, again, if this is your first time in college, uh, it's worth going over uh, really quickly a quick note on plagiarism. Plagiarism is something that affects academic integrity. Plagiarism essentially means copying um, or not giving proper credit where it's due whenever you're writing discussion posts, uh, essays, really anything, any type of academic writing in which you use another person's work and don't provide proper credit um, is is going to be um, is going to be something that uh, you want to definitely avoid. Um, it has huge consequences, so um, definitely be cautious of that. You'll have to go through the plagiarism policy, and then you will have to go through um, these little plagiarism tutorials. They're short. It's not a lot. It's like a total of ten minutes of material, less than. You're just going to go through. Um, what, how to avoid plagiarism. So using citations, what counts as plagiarism, it's a little more complicated than you might think. Um, it's just gonna go through everything that has to do with that. Um, and again, you guys will do this within your own course. Then you will take the quiz acknowledging that you have gone through plagiarism courses. You will click true, you will click true, and you understand those two things. Um, All right, and then your introduction form. Um, so once you finish that, um, let's just go through this, all these navigation items. So when you first enter a course, you will enter into the home or syllabus page. You will be able to see uh, uh, resources and you'll also be able to see announcements inside of every single course. And announcements is uh, what your teacher has said recently um, about the course, important notifications regarding homework, course, uh, class dates, um, things like that. So uh, pay attention to these announcements. Green means that you have not yet read it. So once you click on the message and read it, the green will disappear indicating you have read it. If you have older announcements, you can go ahead and click announcements over here on the left-hand side in class navigation column to visit them. Um, that's like if your teacher said something a while ago, you can't remember it, you wanna visit it, always a good place to check. Uh, next part's important, modules. This is where you're going to spend the vast majority of your time in all of your courses. This is where you're going to live, so to speak. Um, so modules, and this is a great example here. I'm actually glad this happened. So as you can see here in modules, here's the start here module that we just did. And you can see that complete all items has a red dash next to it. So that means that they're not all done. The green check marks are the ones that we've done, and the ones with dashes are the ones that we haven't. So it says that we need to view these two items. Now that we've viewed them, everything should be all good. So we can go back to modules and look, a green check, everything is all completed here. And that means that this is unlocked. So prior to us viewing these two items, all of this stuff was grayed out. It was sort of um, opaque and you wouldn't be able to access it. So Again, um, I can't emphasize enough, your start here module within your course has to be completed prior to action, um, accessing the actual course material such as discussion posts and homeworks. All right, so I wanna take a moment again to emphasize over here, modules is where you are going to be spending the vast majority of your time. Um, it's kind of your home inside of Canvas. You will be able to find all of your various homeworks and, dis and discussion posts here as well as your um, ebook, your electronic books 
and everything else to do with your course. Another place you might spend a lot of time is grades. Grades is going to be where you're able to see your in-course grades. It'll show assignments and then the grade that you received out of the grade that was available for each of your courses. A really neat feature of Canvas is that you're able to use it in your real courses to calculate grades. So you can calculate what you need on various assignments in order to um, get an actual um, course grade. So, you know, in, an, in a real course, um, you would have grades, uh, midterms, assignments, things like that. Um, you would be able to use this feature to calculate what you need to get in order to improve your grade. Last, uh, one of the last things you're going to need people. This just shows everyone that's in any given course, all of their names. And again, you can use the inbox to message them should you need them. Um, all right. Let's also go through your resources and benefits. So that's definitely something that I want to do with you really quickly so that we can show you what is available to you. So the first thing to note is course support. As um, Kelly just um, As Kelly just indicated um, in the chat, um, your, your course support will be able to provide assistance if you get stuck inside of a course. So say you have a question, um, you say something's locked, I don't know where to go, what to do with that. Um, click on this and it will automatically form an email for you and you can just email them automatically, describe your issue and send the email to them. So um, that is definitely a huge resource for you guys. Here's a little example of what it might be. Missing links, missing courses, or issues accessing exams and quizzes. Um, another thing that I want to direct you guys' attention to um, is the open resources and benefits. So the academic and technical resources and benefits that you guys have access to are really big. And you guys have access to so many wonderful things while you're students here at Brookline. You have access to technology resources and setup, technical support, Canvas tutorials, academic policies and procedures, the library that allows you to access different scholarly and academic resources, student support services, career services, accessibility. You have access to college directories. So this is gonna be able to go show you key contacts for your various campuses. Um, Somebody just asked for the Canvas URL. I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. Canvas URL. If you mean like a direct link to Canvas, um, again, that doesn't exist. Uh, you'll have to go through the student portal in order to access Canvas. If we give you a URL, it would just, it wouldn't allow you to access it because you'll have to go through the um, correct steps, but um, that's a good question. So. Okay, so yeah, you'll have your, um, your, directories and then you'll have a uh, nursing specific program information this is for our nursing students so no worries there um, but these are really great resources for you to use and that's canvas essentially i mean um i really encourage you guys once you're able to um, log in and everything to take a minute to play around with it um at this time i'm going to stop sharing really quickly and then i'm going to reshare um or a PowerPoint. Um, okay, um, so you can see back here that we just went through those. Um, additional mobile apps to consider. You can use Bookshelf, Canvas Student, and Cengage. So a little note about Canvas with you guys. For some reason, Canvas, the app, doesn't love Brookline Canvas. Um, so the best, best way to do Canvas through a phone is like this. I'll show you guys really quickly. Um, when you first log in, you can go to your account and then use the QR for mobile login because that will display this. Uh, it'll create a unique code and that will help you um, log in to your phone. So um, yours is unique to you. So once you log in in a computer browser, that'll make logging in on the app 10 times easier. Would highly recommend doing that first. Um, again, don't forget to attend new student orientation. Both things are elements to your success here at Brookline. Uh, you're gonna get all kinds of important contacts, including campus director information, student services, career services, et cetera. 
Um, if you have questions, guys, uh, we'll do a Q&A session here in just a second for you guys. But if you have questions past this meeting, uh, always feel free to email studentservices at unitech.com. I would actually encourage you guys to get out your phones and take a picture of this page um, so that you know what to email um, if you need any help. Because you'll have dedicated student services advisors, but you'll also have access to this, this email um, at all times should you need it. So I'll give everybody just a moment to take some photos of that. Um, at this time, um, if you, you have any questions at all, you can go ahead and pop them in the chat. Um, I'm also going to stop screen sharing now and go back to regular view. Um, if you guys have any questions, please put them in the chat now, or you can uh, unmute yourself and say hello and um, ask a question if you have any. Kelly and I are here for the remainder of the time until you guys are, are satisfied um, in order to answer your questions. However, if you are all good to go, if you have received your welcome email, if you have your username and password, if you are ready to go for your first day of school, you are welcome to leave. Um, you do not have to stick around by any means um, unless you had questions that you wanted answered. So thank you guys again so much for coming to the CC100 presentation and allowing yourself to get familiar with your course uh, material. Um, just the takeaways from today, make sure to go through the three-step process to log in. Um, make sure um, that you have that email to get any questions answered and uh, make sure that you are ready to go for the very first day. Uh, thank you guys again. So we'll stick around if anyone did have any questions, but if you were all good, um, please feel free to go uh, to feel free to go. Tiana, did you mean the welcome email? Yes, okay, I can send it. Tiana, would you mind um, messaging me your personal email so I can send that to you? I see a few people are still here. Yes, if you'd like the welcome email sent to you, now would be the time to just go ahead and pop it in the chat so that I can um, send it to you all as a group. Victor, Jasmine, Angel, Elizabeth, did you guys have any questions? Tiana and Taisha, Taishia, I'm going to send you the email in just a second. Anyone have any more questions? We're here to answer them, so don't be shy. Angel, yes, you can have the email. Um, would you go ahead and just pop your email in the chat that you would like it sent? Thank you so much. Okay. Um, Tiana, what do you mean by supplies, scrubs and things like that? Okay, that will depend on your program and your campus. So, um, I don't know where exactly you're going, but it depends entirely on that. But when you first go to campus, um, you should have things like scrubs and um, stethoscope, any other supplies that you need provided to you. Medical assistant. Okay, so hmm. if you're starting here with Phoenix, because that's my campus, um, you should have those provided to you um, during your first week. Angel, I just sent the email to you. Tucson. Okay, then um, I am not quite sure on that procedure. Yeah, I'm not sure about Tucson either. If it's Tempe, it is um, usually within the first as well. Good to know. Thank you. Tiana, I'm going to send you an email to follow up with that question. Um, this is your student services advisor down at Tucson.
it should be given to you in the course of your class. So, um, you know, when you're already at campus for cl class, you should receive it on one of those days so that you don't have to go out of your way to get it. Elizabeth, um, Shea, Angel, did you guys have any other questions? Elizabeth, I can see you're unmuted, but we can't hear you. Did you have any questions? Shea, I did, or Shay, sorry, I don't know how you pronounce it. I did send it to the, the email that you had sent me, the Yahoo email. Let me know if you don't receive that. And just make sure that you typed it correctly, just, just in case. Okay, yeah, again, guys, you're, you're free to drop off at any time. Um, if you have any questions, though, we'll hang around for the next few minutes to answer those. Okay, so Shay, um, the other student, Tiana, did receive hers. So let's make sure that your email is correct. Um, just verify that it's the one that you sent me. I'll send it back to you. And also make sure to check your spam just in case. Elizabeth, again, did you have any questions? Shay, is that the correct email? Okay, good. Glad that you were able to locate that. Okay, at this time, if no one else has any questions, we will go ahead and be ending the meeting. Um, I hope that everyone has a really great rest of their evening. And again, please feel free to reach out should you have any questions between now and your start date. Please have a great evening. Thank you. Elizabeth, do you have any other questions? She might have left her keyboard. Yeah. I'm just gonna, I think. Okay, I just removed her. I don't oh, know where okay. she went, but she was not responsive for several minutes, so. Yeah.